I speak about uh, Futaki and distributed open governance today. Um, so let me start off by saying uh, decentralized governance is hard. So uh, non-decentralized governance often is difficult enough. I mean, finding consensus in a group where you know what, uh, who is actually in the group um, is often difficult. And now imagine doing the same thing um, with a list of decision makers that's not well-defined or comprehensive. So entities can be added, entities can, be, can drop off, um, and they, they do not necessarily actually need to register somewhere or, somewhere or authenticate themselves. Additionally, you would also uh, want to incorporate a mechanism which actually allows you um, or allows decision makers to not actually have opinions about something or not care about something. So it all boils down to the question, how do we actually make decisions as an open group in a decentralized fashion? So there is, there is tooling. So I think the first bit of tooling was coin voting. This basically means by some mechanism, you actually give coins to people whom you would actually like to vote on things, and they can actually send the coins to the person they want to vote for, or the policy they want to vote for. You heard about DAOs, so decentralized autonomous organizations. They're typically complex. Uh, there, there are lots of ways to actually design them. Uh, and um, they fall back on a list of different mechanisms. So one of them is token curated registries, TCRs. Uh, so basically lists where the people on the list have an incentive to actually maintain the list, um, curate it, and keep it up to date, so as to hold up standards. Uh, you have to have some sort of reputation system, so uh, being able to single out bad actors or uh, rewarding good actors. And uh, one more tool in the tooling kit is Futaki. And Futaki is the thing I'm going to talk about today. So what is Futaki? Uh, Futaki is a form of governance where only those policies are accepted for which prediction markets have clearly estimated that they will have the most positive effect, which kind of segues into the next question, what is a prediction market? So uh, the prediction market, uh, prediction market is a way um, of making the future outcome of an event tradable. Um, the way that uh, I will do this is I will explain uh, what prediction markets are and what they can be used for. Um, and then I will circle back to Futaki and explain how that can be used for uh, decentralized decision making. Okay, so prediction markets. So uh, let's say you have an event, say uh, March, 19, uh, March 2019, Brexit. So you have uh, three different outcomes that could possibly happen in March 2019. Uh, one of them is soft Brexit, the other is hard Brexit, and the third one is no Brexit. Um, so what you actually do is you split up um, a collateral token that you have, say $10, you put in $10, and you get back three tokens. One represents $10 um, under the condition that soft Brexit happens, the second represents $10 under the condition that hard Brexit happens, and the third one represents $10 under the condition that no Brexit happens. So obviously, all of these together are always worth, worth $10. Uh, so just you know, keeping them together is not particularly exciting. The cool thing is that you can now trade them individually. So you can actually sell your no Brexit token because you're absolutely certain no Brexit is not going to happen. So um, why would you actually want to do this? Typically because other people have information that you're not privy to, and you would like to become privy to that information. So, Give you a very real example. Okay, uh, let's say you are a shipping company. You're say Maersk, uh, and you want to ship goods from Hamburg to Shanghai. Uh, you have two routes that you could take. One goes through the Suez Canal. It's 20,000 kilometers long, and it takes 48 days. The other one is the Northeast Passage. The Northeast Passage is actually the water strait north of Russia. Um, it's only 14,000 kilometers. It takes 35 days. So it's, it's, <coughs> the, the caveat is that uh, the Northeast Passage is actually frozen over a lot of the time, and you can't navigate it with you know, a standard cargo ship. So um, what you really want as a shipping agent is you want to know, is this going to be frozen over at a certain da uh, date? 
um, in the future. So basically, if you look at, uh, if you look at um, uh, this uh, slide, uh, the question is, will it be possible to transit the Northeast Passage by the 1st of S September? And then people can actually uh, put money on the outcome they think is, uh, is underrated by the crowd at the moment. So why would you do that? Um, you would want to make, so basically you could just call an expert and um, ask them for, an, for a memo. You, you could also call a bunch of expert, experts, so that gets uh, expensive fairly quickly. But you could also get um, input from other people who actually have insight into this question. So there's a list here. Uh, so people like Arctic scientists, meteorologists specializing on ice formation, local fishermen, uh, local weather stations, the military, satellite, uh, satellite data and AIs who actually trawl you know, some, some sort of information space. Um, and also say, for instance, the cargo shipping companies who have traversed this strait before you. So they m may have taken this you know, a couple of days before you intend to take it, and they know it's perfectly open or they know it's almost, uh, it's almost iced over. So, uh, and this actually makes sure that you can, that you can actually source information um, from the people who actually have the information. So how does it actually work? Technically, so you create a market, uh, so you have to have a question with um, a well-defined list of answers. So in this case, the question is, will it be possible to navigate the Northeast Passage on date X? Uh, and it has two possible outcomes, yes and no. And you also need to specify when it's resolved and where the smart contracts checks, because obviously the blockchain doesn't know whether uh, the strait is iced over or not. So you, need, so you need to specify where the smart contract actually looks up this information, and it could be any, any uh, of a number of Oracle providers, so say the BBC or some sort of weather um, service. Um, and then this market launches. So you actually start, up, start off with two tokens, and you can set the initial value of these tokens. Uh, typically, you know, if you have absolutely no idea, you would maybe choose 50-50, and then these trade individually. So basically, people who think the probability, so the probability of this happening or not happening is actually higher um, than it is priced to be, um, have a direct economic incentive to actually trade this market. So basically, if you're a local fisherman and you know there's absolutely no way this is going to be open in 14 days, um, you have a direct, in, a direct economic incentive because you stand to make a lot of money off of this. Um, what you can see here clearly is uh, that typically these, these two outcome tokens, they, they um, add up to one, uh, because if one doesn't happen, obviously the other has to happen. Okay, um, and then when the market is resolved, so after, um, after this date X, and the smart contract actually checks whether it was open or not, the people who actually hold the factual tokens um, they get back one, so say $10, whatever they put in. Uh, no, that's not true. So basically they, put, they, they, uh, they uh, get back whatever one, uh, one set of yes and no was worth at the beginning. Um, and the people who actually have the counterfactual outcome token, they go empty. Okay, um, so just to uh, sum up, so why would you want to do this? Um, so basically, you make future outcomes tradable. Uh, this helps you aggregate and filter the relevant information into one number. Um, it also facilitates, facilitates custom forecasting. So there are a lot of things you can't actually just find information on on the internet. So you kind of want to incentivize experts to share their knowledge with you. Um, and it also um, supports uh, both human and AI sources of information. So we would expect that most of the questions you can actually put um, in this interface would be answered by bots who have good data and can actually trawl for that. Okay, um, so how does this help you with Futaki? Um, Futaki is uh, one level added to this. So basically what you have to do in the beginning is you have to have uh, some sort of goal. So uh, uh, you have to say, for instance, uh, lower unemployment. And um, so this is the thing that you want to optimize for. Um, and then you can have a number of, uh, of strategies, how to actually go about this. And then you let the market actually rate these strategies. And the way that's done is actually fairly clever, so, and results in a policy recommendation. Um, so let me give you a very concrete example. Um, so the very concrete example is, should we fire the CEO? So we have a company, uh, and 
we want to know, should, would, we be better, would we be better off without the CEO? Um, and now you could use you know, a number of metrics to actually uh, optimize for, and you know, one would maybe be uh, employee happiness or customer retention or um, standing of the brand in the world. Obviously, you would actually have to find metrics to quantify these because that's not always easy. We're going for something super simple here. So um, the metric we are optimizing for is what will the quarterly revenue be, um, say, six months into the future. And then you create two markets. So one market, what will the monthly revenue be six months from now, given that we fire the CEO? And one market, uh, what will the uh, quarterly revenue be six months from now, given that we do not fire the CEO? And uh, then you let these tra trade by themselves, and um, there will be two forecasts. So what will be the uh, monthly revenue, given that you don't fire the CEO, and given that you don't, uh, the, monthly, uh, the monthly revenue, given that you do not uh, fire the CEO? Uh, and one of them wins out. So in this example, um, the CEO has to go. So you fire the CEO. Um, and this market actually runs on. So this market actually uh, runs on until the evaluation period is over. Um, and then people actually uh, stand to gain or lose money uh, depending on whether, whether uh, the res whether the outcome they put money on actually happened or not. So um, that, there's very real money at stake, which incentivizes people to actually, uh, to, to actually uh, put in the best information they have. Um, everyone who actually participated in the other market, um, so what will the, what will the um, quarterly revenue be six months from now, given that we do not, fund, uh, that, that we do not fire the CEO, gets refunded, because there's no way to actually evaluate this, because we did fire the CEO, so basically everyone just gets their money back. But um, one should keep in mind that it was always a possibility that that would have been the factual market, so those people also were in incentivized to actually give it their best. So how does it actually work under the hood? Uh, this is fairly technical, so I will just uh, I will kind of skip over this a little bit, uh, and I will also take questions as to this. Um, so basically, uh, you create uh, two top-level outcome tokens, um, outcome token A and outcome token B. So in this case, this would be, um, will the CEO be fired? Um, yes and no. And then uh, you create two second-level tokens for each, so uh, in total, uh, four tokens. Uh, so one short and one long for you fire the CEO, and one short and one long for you do not fire the CEO. And then these can trade individually. So you do not actually need to partake in both markets. Um, if you do not want to partake in both markets, you just hold on to both tokens in the market you do not wish to partake in. Uh, and you can always uh, exchange those back um, for the money you put in. Okay, so um, then... Uh, one option actually performs better, uh, so it's selected. Um, uh, and then after the, uh, after the, so basically the, the CEO is fired in this example, um, and the collateral is uh, paid out for the market A conditional, so basically the thing that actually happened, so, uh, so basically if you set the revenues going, going to go up, um, you make money, if you, if you set the revenues going to go down, you lose money depending on how the, uh, how the how uh, what actually happens after six months and the other the other uh, sorry the other uh, the other uh, half of the tree just gets refunded there and then. Um, so why does this actually make sense in the blockchain space? Uh, so finding as I said finding good and efficient policies is actually super hard in a group uh, and it's much harder in a distributed and possibly anonymous or pseudonymous group uh, in a way that scales. Um, so basically what Futaki does um, is it gives you a tool. So what you still need to do is, as a group, you still need to define values. You still need to define what you actually optimize for. And you still need to define what are actually acceptable policies that you would be willing to put into place. Um, and then you just, and then you have these markets that run um, and you profit from the information that people, from the insights and the information that people have and are willing to actually 
put into these markets. And people are incentivized to participate because they think their information and their insights are superior to other people's information and insights. Um, and uh, this, uh, uh, this results in finding policies or opting for policies that actually factors all of these different viewpoints into the outcome. Okay, uh, so I have a very small announcement. We, we are going to have a conference here in Berlin uh, on July 19th and 20, 20th. It's called DAPCON. It's a non-profit global developer conference focusing on decentralized applications, tooling, and foundational infrastructure on Ethereum. Um, and uh, there, there will be three tracks, so it will be presentations, panel discussions, and workshops at the Postbahnhof. Um, main topics are governance, scalability, identity, decentralized exchange, dApp development, and tooling, uh, and it will be pretty hands-on with uh, a lot of workshops. Um, so if you're interested in that, uh, check it out on dapcon.io. Thanks. Thank you. So we, we actually got a bunch of questions. We don't have a ton of time before lunch, but maybe we can touch on a couple of <laughs> Absolutely. them. Absolutely. Okay. So I think the, you guys can also vote these up if there's one that you really feel should be asked before we shut this down. Um, so first question is, if the quality of predictions depends on the input of experts, but these same experts already make a living off being experts, why would they contribute? Uh, that's, a, that's a great question. So I think I would, um, I would give a two-pronged answer. Uh, so first of all, the people who are usually asked as, as experts are not always actually the best experts, and they're not, um, uh, and they're not, a, con they're not a conclusive li list. So often they're actually experts that are never actually asked these questions, um, and they do not get the chance to actually give their, adv uh, their expert advice. Um, the, second, uh, the second answer I would give even if that were the case, um, it's kind of an unstable equilibrium because it's, it's enough that one expert kind of defects and starts uh, taking part in these uh, prediction markets. But I wouldn't even I wouldn't even uh, I wouldn't even see it, you know, as crassly. Um, so basically, uh, there are a lot of people who are typically not not asked not asked who still have. Uh, who still have valid insights, and the experts, as soon as there's um, a forecast where that they don't actually agree with, um, they they are they actually have a financial incentive to p participate and move the market in the right direction. So next question is um, oh switched no didn't switch. What is Gnosis's difference to Augur, and are you headed in the same direction? Yes, so Augur is also a prediction market company. Um, so what they actually, what their business model revolves around is the decentralized oracle that um, they, uh, they, uh, they invented, and it's a really cool mechanism, basically um, making the oracle that I kind of skipped over in, in my presentation. So basically I just said you can pick from any number of oracle providers, say the BBC or Reuters or your local weather service. Um, that's basically what their business model is centered around, providing good, uh, providing oracle services um, to people who actually uh, have need for oracle services. It's purely, um, it's, it's, uh, it's completely decentralized which we don't have. So for us, the, the market creator actually has to pick the oracle. Um, and I would say we're, we, we are kind of, we're heading in, a, in the same direction, but it's completely complementary because we actually focus on the trading and they f f um, focus on the oracle resolution. And I think the last one here is, how do you prevent insider trading? What's to stop a decision maker from making, oh, sorry, this just ran out of batteries, from making a guaranteed bet? Oh, so that is actually an excellent question. So basically, uh, the, 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 we should say that laws and regulations still apply. So if you are not allowed to participate in a market because you, uh, it, it would be insider trading, you are still subject to the law, exactly like you would be if you actually traded um, on, a, on a traditional stock market. So say you're the CEO of IBM or something, um, you're not allowed to trade your own stock, and if you, but you're not checked by a bank that actually gives you 
um, gives you a portfolio to, uh, to interact with the stock market with, you're not checked for that. So basically, this is investigated after the fact. So basically, if there are um, trades that seem unlikely or that just seem really lucky, um, there's an enforcement agency that steps in, and it will be the same for, uh, for information markets. Very cool. Thank you so much. Yeah.